Hey guys, you guys uh, Latter-day Saints? We are. Yeah. What's up? Hey, I'm Jeff. How you doing? I'm doing. I'm What's your name? Mendoza. Mendoza. Where are you from? Philippines. The Philippines. Yeah. What's up? Where are you from? Uh, Virginia. Virginia. Oh yeah. Where in Virginia? Uh, Fredericksburg. Fredericksburg is that north, south? Pretty far north. Really? Okay. Yeah. Right on. Like closer to DC? Yeah, really close to DC. Really? Yeah. Right on. Oh yeah, I lived in Sterling for five yeah. years. Yeah, yeah. Oh sweet. Awesome. I lived in uh, uh, Maryland, so not oh, not oh. too far. Awesome. Yeah, Where are you from? California. Where in California? Oakland. Oakland. It's hardcore. It is hardcore. <laughs> I'm in Berkeley, so like, Okay, uh, all right. But most people don't know where that is. So yeah. Oakland. Okay, right on. Where are you from? Utah. Utah. Oh, well. Yes. Wow, the I motherland. High school with this guy. Out of Did you really? So, yeah. Wow, where in Utah? Midway. Midway. Midway? I'm not sure where that's at. Park City is? Park City. Yeah, Park okay, I know where Park City, City. Okay, yeah. Yeah, right on. Okay. So you're here on your mission? Yeah. Oh, yeah. How long have you guys been on your mission for? Oh, both Two of years, us have been here about a year. year. These guys are going home soon. Okay, you guys are going home. You guys are like yeah. over a year. Yeah. Okay, right on. Couple well, that's a pretty sweet, sweaty, pretty sweet gig getting in Kauai. <laughs> right? You said sweaty. Yes. Did I? Yeah, it's you both. almost said sweaty. It's almost, sweaty. Sweaty. It is. Sweaty. Right now it is. Yeah. Right on. Yeah. So, um, you guys, Latter Day Saints in Kauai, on your mission. Mm -hmm. Why? What, what's your testimony? Why? Why'd you? Uh, why'd you come? Come here. Come. On a, on a mission? Yeah. Um, well, like, just to tell the world or people of Kauai, or the Hawaii, people of Hawaii that God loves them, that families can be together forever through the gospel. That's why we're here and, you know, it's up to them. We only invite people. Mm -hmm. We don't force them. Mm -hmm. We invite them to come into Christ, but it's still their choice. And so I agree. We do our best and to, we pray every day to find those opportunities that we can to help other people to come closer to Christ. So, yeah. Right on. For me? Yeah. I feel like I kind of had to wade through a lot of crap to get to my faith to the point where it is right now. Okay. And so for me, I feel like I'm out here because I can show people where I made mistakes and where I could have gone to kind of get there faster. So I can just kind of help people to gain faith, to gain testimony faster than I did, easier than I did. Okay. Were you uh, raised in the church? Yes. You but sounded I like struggled with. Oh, okay, it. okay, yeah. gotcha. But parents. Yeah, they LDS. Were really strong. So. Okay, right on. Okay, how about you? Uh, something that made me happy, and I wanted other people to have the chance to learn about it if they want to. Okay. Did you always plan to go on your mission, or no. sort of a last-minute thing? No. No. Uh, it was always something that was on my mind, but kind of like Elder Stanton here, it was something that. I wanted to make sure it was something I believed in before I went out and did it, if that makes sense. Yeah. So I didn't want to just do it because I was supposed to, or do it because people expected me to, but I wanted to do it because it's something I wanted to do. Okay. How about you, man? Um, I knew that Christ had died for us, right? And that this gospel will bring us closest to Christ, to be able to live and be with our families forever. And I want okay. to share that with others. Right on. So uh, how'd you get your testimony? Like, what happened? What did you study? What did you? What happened in your lives to get you to the point where you said, "Joseph Smith's a prophet, and this is all true"? It took some time <laughs> yeah, for me. Okay. A long time. What would, what would that process look like? Uh, well, my family also had connections to the church my whole life, but they encouraged me not to just do it because they were doing it. Wanted me to believe it. Okay. Right? So I would go to church. I kind of learned that kind of thing. Um, studied the Bible. Studied that. Went into other churches. Hung out with other churches. Uh, I went to college for a little bit and had some experiences there where my friend started to kind of learn for herself and she had questions and just, I just ended up talking to her a lot mm -hmm. and from what she was talking about it reminded me the happiness that I felt per se in my childhood, the times when I felt really good and I decided that I was looking at it, I'm like, you know, it's, it's times when I was living the gospel, it's times when I was doing my best to have a good life. I wasn't perfect, still mess up all the time, even a missionary, I still mess up all the time. Okay. But, it got me to a point where it was something I wanted to pray about, to know if that's what was happening, if that's where I needed to go, and I got my answer. Yeah. Anybody else have any profound experiences? Te I, mean, it, always, I always like to share. I just kind of got tired of um, a lot of people telling me that Joseph Smith was a prophet, Book of Mormon was true, and then a lot of people telling me that it wasn't. 
and it kind of like escalated on both sides to a point where I was like, all right, stop. And I just kind of pushed everything else out of the way and mm -hmm. just studied the scriptures and prayed. That's really cool. So so you were in a, um, Virginia. Yes. And so you talked to people who, who didn't believe Joseph yes. was a prophet. Or even were very against it. So super opposed or what people call anti. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So what'd you do with that conflict? How did you resolve that when you have people coming from both sides? Would you say you went to the scriptures? Yeah. I tried what was that to, like? I tried to kind of like keep what I believe separate from what they believe, but I also tried to listen to them. Okay. Because like obviously they're at their point for a reason. So I tried to like, I kept them separate from what I personally believe, but I also tried to take everyone's opinion into account. And it just got to a point where it was like, okay, either I believe something that's insane or I believe something that's true enough for people to think it's insane. Mm -hmm. And so I, I just kind of stopped listening to everybody and I studied and I made like a big list of all the, the stuff that I thought didn't make sense. Okay. And I just started checking them off as I read. What was one of those things for you that you, you saw it as, as a conflict initially and you, then you started looking into it and then you resolved it? What, what would one of those things be? Probably the need for a restoration. I don't know how familiar you are with Mormon beliefs. A bit. I've been raised around Mormons. Oh, I, live in, I, live in, I actually live in Arizona. Oh, right on. And right. so it's Mesa. Arizona. I'm not right. sure if you know. It's like yeah. it's like second. I think well, at least at one point there was like there was like the second largest Mormon population. All right. Besides, you know, Utah. Um, so I, I am familiar. It's my son, Stellar. Nice to meet you, Stellar. Stellar. Sweet name. Can we uh, wave at your camera? Is that okay? I've been wanting to. Yeah. Like absolutely. Fun. Of course. <laughs> of course. Um, we love to show um, dialogue between Latter-day Saints and Christians to show that there can be love and grace and um, respect and gentleness and, and that we can listen. So what was that, what was that like? Um, the restoration, the need for restoration the, the need for you. for the Book of Mormon. Okay. That was a big one. Okay. I had read some scriptures, been told about some scriptures in the Bible where it says like, you don't need any more scripture, this is all you need to be saved. So I really struggled with that. So Christians probably used uh, Revelation, don't yes. add to the words yep. of this book, or God will add to you the plagues that are written in this book, yep, mm -hmm. and saying, well, that means the whole Bible when it's really referring to Revelation, <laughs> right? There'd be other texts that would say don't add to God's word, but specifically that would be the response. Yeah. Right? Oftentimes. Okay. Oftentimes, yes. Okay. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I, I just yeah. had a lot of good Christian friends that disagreed with me but respected what I believed. And yeah. there were other people that did not respect what I believed. Mm. And so I just went through and I studied really carefully what the scripture meant and the background of it. And like you were saying, how it was specifically meant for Revelation. Yeah. And all, all sorts of different stuff. And just, it really just came down to a million little things rather than one big thing. Okay. The big stuff came later. I had to get a million little answers before I could get one big one. Good. So how, how do you, I mean, we live in a, a time when I was, one of my good, good friends in high school, his name is Wade, sweetest family, Latter-day Saints. Like, I, I love your community. I love you. Some of the, I think you guys are some of the sweetest, most gracious, wonderful people. Um, and uh, so my good friend in high school, Wade, um, was deeply devout Latter-day Saint family. And... Um, he introduced me to Mormonism, and um, and so I I entered into like relationships with Latter Day Saints with a close friend, and family fed me all the time, and I had more missionaries in my house all the time, and so like that was like oh, man. for me no it was a, it was an amazing experience like I, I cherish it because it introduced me to a community of people that I really care about that I disagree with but that I really really care about and just I have gained a lot of respect for, um, so. In, in the conflicts that I had early on with, with Wade and I, as I was searching the scriptures and he was giving me a Book of Mormon, telling me to pray about it and everything else, was my, my problems were like not over the, the little things. You know, like people, people get offensive at times. Even Christians, professing Christians will get offensive with Latter-day Saints. They'll say things like, tell me about that silly underwear. You know, <laughs> yeah. and it's offensive. Like, there's Christians that wear strange underwear that I don't want to talk about, right? <laughs> so it, Christians would go to like silly things like, how come you don't drink coffee? Like what's with the coffee stuff? So for me, it was more fundamental. And I think in the scriptures, more fundamental. It's the issue of who is God and how do you come to know him? 
And so for, for my initial conflict with my, with my good friends, it was about Jesus and how do I come to know God. And when, when, you, were, when you were studying and really trying to resolve the conflicts, now that we live in this age of freedom to access to information, Google is like just instant information. Did you do any research and, and look at some of the major disputes between, say, Mormons and... And I talked to a lot of people that were really well educated in their own religions as well. Did you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. What was that like? <laughs> it was fascinating. Okay. I really loved it. I talked to like... Um, I, I talked Can you give me a water lady. real fast? I'm like dying of thirst. I talked so. to one lady that was a Judeo-Christian. She was Jewish, fully Jewish, but she also believed in the Messiah. And that okay. was really cool, and she shared a lot about like older Jewish stuff yeah. that I didn't know about, and how it kind of enhanced Christianity. Yeah. Which I should have known, but I. So, didn't. Uh, um, a messianic Jew. Yeah. Is that how she referred to herself? Jew. Yeah. Fascinating people. I love right. Them. Totally. And just other people, like pastors of different faiths, just okay. member, like regular members that didn't know as much, but yeah. they knew what they believed. And, okay. And I, I loved just learning about what all the other ones believed, and it. I don't know if it clarified the, my understanding of the doctrine, mm -hmm. but it, it clarified my understanding of the people. It's your wife. Okay. Oh, thank you. Sorry, it's been so hot today. <laughs> oh, we <laughs> feel you. It's been humid too. It's not just the heat. Uh, yeah. It's a lot better today than it has been. How long have you guys been here for? So, uh, well, oh, it's a little bit more than two weeks for me, about a week, oh, about a week for him. Um, can I can I ask you like one question and see just how, how you would you would try to resolve it. Because um, for me, from the very beginning and talking to my Mormon friends, close Mormon friends, it's always been surrounding like the simple issues. Who is God and how do I come to know him? So I spend a lot of time reading Joseph's writings and reading the Book of Mormon, Pearl of Great Price, uh, Journal of Discourses, History of the Church, those sorts of things. Right. Um, listening to spiel, man. a lot, a lot. Right and the, re the reason, honestly, and I, this, I just be completely transparent, it's I think a deep love and passion for just people in general and for the gospel for me. But honestly, in a practical level, it was the it was the the sweetness and the genuineness of my Mormon friends that caused me to want to dive in and listen. Um, so, like the King Follett discourse. Yeah. Do you know the discourse? Yeah, it's pretty intense. That's some pretty deep. Stuff. Yeah. So it's Joseph's. It's his most famous message. Um, and it's the one where he really communicated with clarity everything he believes about God. And he said that um, God himself was once as we are now and as an exalted man who sits enthroned in yonder heavens. And he says, we've imagined and supposed that God was God from all eternity. I will refute that idea and take away the veil so that you may see. You've got to learn to become gods yourselves the same way all gods have done before you. So, so you see how much I've read it. I, I know it <laughs> yeah. by heart. Um, so for me as a Christian, when, when my friend said, you got to read the Book of Mormon, you got to pray about it, the gospel needed to be restored, and Joseph was a prophet, I was actually a very young believer at the time, wasn't raised in church. And so I had read the Gospel of John at least by then. And when I read the King Follett Discourse with the Gospel of John, I started feeling the conflict. So Joseph says that you can become a god, and that's, that's the goal. Eternal life is becoming God. Um, and he said that God wasn't always God. He became God. And so what, what do you do as a genuine, genuine, um, honest, sincere Latter-day Saint? What do you do with, say, a Christian who says, Joseph came almost 2,000 years later with a different view of God than the scriptures had already laid down. So just one, one thing to aim at, okay? Um, in Isaiah 43.10, God says, Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. I'm the first and I'm the last. Besides me there is no God. Um, that's in Isaiah 44.6. So God says there's no gods formed before him, none after him. He's the first, the last. He doesn't even know of any other gods. Then Joseph comes along and says, they're all wrong. All the creeds are an abomination, all the professors are corrupt, right? Quotes. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. And uh, to join none of them, because they're all wrong. And so Christians have the Bible that says one thing about God, and they've been teaching one thing historically about God for 2,000 years, and Joseph says they're all wrong. God was a man who became a God. He had gods before him, and you can become one one day. But in just one text alone, and there's many, 
God says, none before, none after, Isaiah 43.10. How, how do you address that? Because I believe you're sincere and devout, but how do you address that? That's, that's two different views of God. Yeah. That was one that confused me, because there were, there were scriptures in the Bible itself that at least to me seem to contradict each other. Okay. And I, the Bible has very few contradictions once you actually like get into it and really understand the background. But there are some scriptures that seem to insinuate that you would go on to eternal perfection. And there are some scriptures that seem to insinuate that God was the only one that could ever and would ever be perfect. Okay. And so for me, I, I tried to juxtapose those scriptures and they didn't match up. And so I, I think I just had to change the way I saw what God was saying in that scripture. Uh, there is no there is no other God besides God because he's the only one we're ever going to worship. And the way I interpret that scripture in Isaiah is that he is our only God that we will ever have. We're never going to worship anybody greater. There never will be anybody greater for us. And if we ever become a God someday, it's going to be in a very different, you know, God's not going to turn around and worship us. He'll always be. No, of course. And it would be a, mis yeah. it would be a mischaracterization of your beliefs if somebody said that. Mm -hmm. Like you're getting, God's all of a sudden going <laughs> to bow to you or yeah. something like that. That would, that would be inaccurate. And you guys definitely don't believe that. But say just that text in Isaiah 43.10 says, before me, there was no God formed. Neither shall there be after me. And he says, is there a God besides me? Same text. Indeed, there is no other God. I know not one. He says he doesn't even know of any other gods. But Joseph said that there's a council of God. And they came together and they concocted and prepared a plan to create the world and the people it. And the Pearl of Great Price, early on in 1830, um, in the original Book of Mormon, it's essentially monotheistic. There's only one God. But by the time 1844 comes along, Joseph's views have progressed. And now he believes in polytheism, many gods. That's why you see in the Pearl of Great Price, he says in the beginning that gods created the heavens and the earth. There was a, a shift. But in, in, it just, in Isaiah, he says no gods were formed before him, none will be after him. He doesn't even know of any other gods. Now, here's what, when, when I was asking you about your testimonies, I was wondering because all my Mormon friends, uh, have said, I prayed about it. I had this experience, right? That's how I know it's true. I felt it. I felt the burning in the bosom, and that's how I know that it's true. And, and I don't mean this as an, an offensive thing, but I rarely find a Mormon friend who has said, um, it wasn't my experience simply. It was the text of God's word. I tested it by scripture. So for example, um, the test of a prophet in Deuteronomy chapter 13. I don't want to belabor the point, just keep talking, but <laughs> in Deuteronomy 13, one through four, this is really important guys, especially since you're on your mission. Um, God tells his people, the way that you know somebody is from him, that they're truly a prophet of God, is not the signs and wonders, if they even have them. It's if they lead you after a different God. He says, God says, I'm testing you to see whether you love me. And the test of a prophet wasn't whether it felt good, looked good, seemed good. It was whether somebody contradicted with what God had already said. So here you have God telling us in his word that he'll preserve his word. It'll never fall away. Jesus says that. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. The Bible's saying there is only one God, none before, none after. And he doesn't even know any other gods. Joseph comes along in 1830, publishes the Book of Mormon, and he ends up teaching that it's all wrong. There are many gods, gods without number. You can become one one day. God had gods before him. So God says, test him by the scriptures. Did you ever do that? Did you ever test Joseph by the scriptures? Hey, Gigi. What's up? How are you? You guys heard me last night? Yeah. Yes. How are you feeling today? Could be better. Could be better. Well, glad you're alive. Surprisingly. Uh -huh. Yes. <laughs> so did you ever test him by scripture? So by testing by scripture, do you yeah. mean like reading all the scriptures and comparing every single scripture to Joseph Smith, or do you mean? Well, I mean, that, I guess that would be unfair. That would be an unfair standard to say, um, Elder, did you look at every verse and compare with all the teachings <laughs> of Joseph? That's right. a huge volume of, of literature. But I, just as an example, like say the basic stuff, mm -hmm. like what Joseph said about Jesus versus what the Bible teaches about Jesus. Did you, did you do that, did you, or did you base it solely really about, upon that experience? Well. I guess for me, I've never had a burning in the bosom. 
That's okay. Not, I'm kind of jealous of people that do have burning in the bottom. Okay. So that's not really my thing. <laughs> okay. Um, but what I do based off, of, like I told you a little mo before, is based off how I feel. Because I do know, and when I've read the scriptures, when I've read the Bible, and I am no Bible scholar, I'm jealous that have all these scriptures memorized. That's not really my thing. I'm just a 20 year old man. Not even trained to do this, but something I feel passionately about. Well, yeah. But when I have read it, I have been told that if what is leading me towards God is never going to give me the bad fruits of the Spirit, as they say in Galatians. Right. It's not going to lead me astray where I'm feeling awful. It's not leading me astray where I know that I'm worshiping other gods. What I can tell you is I have followed what Joseph Smith has said, and I have followed the Book of Mormon. I have never, ever felt like I've been worshiping more than one God, my eternal Father. Now, I have read this discourse. I do know what you're talking about. Yeah. But as far as my experiences personally with the scriptures, I never have had any doubts about worshiping my Father in heaven. I do understand that I worship Him through the Savior, Jesus Christ. Yeah. The Holy Ghost is a big part of my life, but I see them as three separate people who are all guiding me to one God. Same with everything in the scriptures for me. Many different prophets, many different ideas. Isaiah talked very differently than Joseph Smith, that is true. But they're all leading me to the same person and have all led me to the same feelings I feel now. I appreciate that explanation. Um, that's personal, like for me, I mean, obviously that's not the same for everyone, but. Sure, no, 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 I appreciate the, the honesty and the transparency. Um, so, can I give you a, an example that wouldn't include you and I? Please. So, you, you mentioned Father, we're using the same language. So we're speaking Christianese, right? Yeah. Heavenly yeah. Father, <laughs> Jesus, we are, right? We're using the same language, but we mean so and so many different things. So uh, take us out of the equation for a minute and say, take for example, not a lot of Muslims in Kauai, I've discovered. Not too many. Right, not too many. I've not met many here. But if you and I walk up together to a Muslim on the street, if we found one in Kauai, <laughs> um, and we said, hey, do you believe in Jesus? What would they say? Yes, as a They prophet. would say, yeah, he's a prophet, right? Now, if you and I together, knowing some of our differences, walked up to that same Muslim and we said, um, you believe in Jesus? He said, yeah, peace be upon him. He's a prophet of God. And we said, did he die on a cross for sins and did he rise from the dead? They will say, Jesus never did that. And if we said, is he the divine son of God? They'd say, no, he was a prophet, a Razul, right? Um, so here we have, we're using the word Jesus but that Muslim doesn't believe in Jesus, does he? Not in the way that we believe in Christ. Not in the way that the Bible says, right? Because if, if, if you walk up to that Muslim and you would say, who's Jesus? He'd say, he didn't die on a cross, he didn't rise from the dead, and he's a, he's a prophet, but not divine, divine son of God. Right. So that is the word Jesus, but not Jesus. Now if we also, and this is here, Jehovah's Witnesses, right? So if we walked up together to Jehovah's Witness and we said, do you believe in Jesus? They would say, yes. yes. But, <laughs> you, right, <laughs> right. They believe he's Michael the Archangel, the first and greatest creation of Jehovah God, right? Um, 144,000 enter into paradise with God, right? All, all that. So the point is, is the word Jesus is there, but it's not Jesus, right? So the question is, is this, because Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. He said he was the only way to God. I know you believe that. I respect that. You guys, ex you guys are vigilant around that truth that whoever Christ is, he's the only way to the Father. And you guys are dedicated to that. So I respect that. But 2 Corinthians 11, in the first century, Paul warns the church in Corinth that he's worried about them, that they'll be deceived and follow another Jesus, another Christ, another spirit, another gospel. That's in the first century, not long after the resurrection. So the question is, do you have the true Christ? Because so for one thing, one major thing, I mentioned John a moment ago, right? It says in John chapter one, verse one, in the beginning was the word, you can finish it, right? And the word was with God and the word was God, was God right? It says he was in the beginning with God, all things were created through him and nothing came into being that's come into being except through him. So Jesus, it says in John one, always existed always existed with the Father, and He was by very nature God. He created everything. Nothing came into existence apart from Him. Right. Now, I believe that. But Joseph's revelation denies that, because Joseph taught that there were multitudes of gods before God who created things, right? And it, he taught that Jesus and Lucifer are spirit brothers. Jesus isn't the creator of Lucifer, like the Bible says, he's his brother. That's a different Christ.
first thing, I see, I see what you're talking about. Yeah. I see what you're talking about. But I guess the thing that I would say, at least for me, is I do believe, so like what you're saying is that Jesus created everything, right? Created the world, created all that. Everything. We absolutely Without him, nothing came that. into being. Mm -hmm. We absolutely agree with that, but we believe that they created it hand in hand with God. Now, well, if you're putting it with that same, then some people would say that Jesus was God, you might say. Yes. But what we see is just because they both have that same name doesn't mean they're the same person. Just have the same name doesn't mean that they're Actually, both God. I'm with you 100%. As a matter of fact, historically, um, based upon the scriptures, the Christian church has never taught that Jesus is the Father. That's actually was cast out as heresy early right, on in right, the church. Right. Many people think that's what the Trinity is, that Jesus is the Father, the Father is Jesus and the Holy Spirit, but that's right. actually heretical teaching. The Christians have never taught that. We believe there's one God by nature, three eternal coexistent persons sharing the one being of God, not three beings, one being three persons. Joseph taught that there are, Different for us. yeah, Joseph three taught there are three persons. beings yeah. uh, who are gods yeah. of this earth, right? Yeah. And then multiple gods outside of that. But a moment ago, I appreciate what you said. You said, you, you affirmed John 1 that Jesus created everything in existence. You said, I believe that. But let me just say this, and I mean this with gentleness and respect, honestly. Um, Joseph's revelation doesn't allow you to agree with that because he said that Jesus and Lucifer are spirit offspring of Elohim and one of his wives. So Jesus is not the creator of everything, according to Joseph. He's one God among many, he's Lucifer's brother. Do you see? I do see what you're saying. And I actually still, like, I could go on for kind of a long time. This might not, I don't, I'm not here to argue or bash or anything. Oh, no, no, I know. But we do believe, at least for me, back me up or correct me if I'm wrong because you know, I'm never always 100% right. But is that all of us have been eternal beings, like Jesus Christ, even God per se. So it doesn't mean that Jesus Christ what didn't exist before. So Jesus Christ and God, they created everything, yes, but they are still the offspring of God, if that makes sense. No. Um, uh, there, I think there's some, some logical and biblical contradictions there, and, and of course, I mean that respectfully. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But just in terms of, I'll give you another example, it might bring more clarity to what I'm saying. Um, in Colossians chapter 1, it says that Jesus, for by him, Jesus, were all things created, whether in heaven or on earth, visible or invisible, it says all things were created by Jesus. That includes Satan. So you can't have Jesus as the creator of everything, including Satan, and be Satan's brother. That's a different Christ. And according to the Bible, if you have a false Christ, you have a Christ that can't save. And that's my deep concern for my Mormon friends, is, is not in a sense of wanting to rob you of your faith or to injure you in some way or out of hatred or animosity, is that the Bible warns me that I could be following a false Christ and that I need to examine what I believe and test all things, hold fast to that which is true. And Jesus said, thy word is truth. Test what I believe, test what any prophet says by the scriptures, because here's the thing, whatever our disagreements, we need to have Christ, the true Christ for forgiveness and salvation. And if I'm following a false one, I need to abandon it. I need to like swallow my pride and abandon it and come to the true Christ, right? And receive forgiveness and salvation. And I hope the same thing for you guys, right? Because no matter what, we're on the tail end of this. Jesus has already come, the scriptures have already been laid down, and now what we have to work with is God's revelation and to test, right? So for example, and I think this would be an interesting test. Um, if you put a, a Latter-day Saint next to a Christian, next to, um, uh, say, a Roman Catholic, next to a Muslim, a Jehovah's Witness, a Rosa Christian, a Christian, Christian scientist, and an atheist, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you said, um, Elder, Tell everyone your, your experiences with God. You'd share all your experiences and this passionate experience and genuine. And then the Muslim shares his experience. And he says, the Mormons are all wrong. Jesus didn't die for sins. He didn't rise from the dead. This is the true experience. I've had these experiences. And the Jehovah's Witness goes, and now we go to the line and we're all having these amazing experiences, all believing in contradictory gods and gospels, contradicting what each other say about Jesus, but all having genuine experiences, right? We can't know what is true based on our experiences. We can know what's true based upon the word of the living God. And what God said in his word long before Joseph, Joseph Smith came along was that there is only one God, none before, none after, that you will never become a God one day. 
that Jesus has eternally existed as God, not created, not the brother of Lucifer. And it says, in fact, this, Romans 3.28, we conclude that a man is justified, declared righteous, through faith apart from any work of law. That father. through faith in Jesus, we are credited his righteousness, not because we're good, not because we deserve it, because of what he did. Christ lived the perfect life. He was perfectly obedient. He died to take our place and rose from the dead so we would get a perfect righteousness as a gift. We would be made new, alive, changed. We would have good works, but they would flow from a person who was already redeemed as a gift, right? And it's through faith alone. That's what the Bible teaches about salvation. In contrast, and this is the last thing I'll say, in contrast, and you know this better than I do, I'll probably misquote it, articles of faith. We believe that through the atonement of Jesus Christ, all mankind may be saved by obedience to the law. Do you see that? In the first part of that, I go, yes. Through the atonement of Jesus Christ, all mankind may be saved. And then there's an addition, by obedience. So not Christ, not his work, not a gift. It's grace plus my work, my labor. And the Bible says to that work, Galatians chapter 5, he says, you've become estranged from Christ. He's become of no effect to you. Whosoever of you attempts to be justified by the law, you've fallen from grace. Paul says, choose. It's either Christ's work and him alone through faith, or it's yours. And we know that any of us who've sinned against God have broken his whole law. So my, my, listen, I know we just ran into each other on the street. We just came here with family. We have some people who are meeting here and I saw you guys. I love you guys, genuinely care for you. And, and, and let me just say this, and I, I, I hope I can be as transparent, as honest with you as possible. I know that being on a street like this, on your mission, with all you've invested in this, to hear a message like this, if what I'm saying is true, it would mean something radical in your life. And it would mean, it would be like a, it would be like a bomb going off in your life, if what I'm saying is true. You don't have to accept it yet, but if what I'm saying is true. But what if, brothers, Okay, and I mean in the, in the humanity sense, yep. okay? What if, what if God sent a, a messenger to you today with grace and mercy while you're here on a miss, mission, and I don't mean this offensively, I mean this in a sense of my passion for you. You're on a mission preaching a different God and a different gospel. And a person came here tonight giving you scriptures and truth, and it was an act of God's love and mercy in your life. What if that was what happened tonight? Would you, would you desire eternal life, right? Jesus says, what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? What if you kept your family? What if you kept all this up, but you lost your soul? What is it worth, right? And so that's my call to you is this. The Bible says that Jesus is God, eternally God, not Lucifer's brother. Salvation is a gift of God apart from any work of law. Repent and believe the gospel, Jesus said. Be reconciled to God as a gift to the true Christ. That's the call. That's the message I have for you guys tonight, okay? And um, I know you guys are handing stuff out tonight. If, if you would, this is just, just, a, just a message with some basic teachings here, quotes from Brigham Young, Joseph Smith, and it contrasts them to the Bible on the inside. Awesome. Would you take it and just look it over? Let's do it. Yeah, all right, guys. I only have three. <laughs> so one of you is going to have to share or whatever, or just hey, toss them back and forth. Us, we live together. So we okay, perfect, good. And, and, I, and to be fair, give me what, if you have some material, I will take it and I will commit to read it. Do you have any? We weren't actually passing anything out tonight. Were you? Okay. So I interrupted your I time off, maybe. You okay. No, no, no. We were, <laughs> right. we were still talking to people. Okay. I do All right. One, though, if you like. So I, I give you my commitment to read what you've given me. All right. We'll okay. Read it too. All right. We'll read it. Hey, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank I appreciate you, you spending time. You. Thank, you. thank you so much. Thank you, thank you for no, spending time with me. It. I really thank appreciate it. it. Gentlemen, thank Jeff. You. Jeff? Jeff, yes. All right. nice to hey, meet you guys. thank you guys. All right. I really thank appreciate so the time. Same thank you guys. See you too, though. All right. Jeff.